Revelations. See ancient artefacts and long lost ancient scrolls. The strange writing on this clay brick is known as cuneiform. And the script was used to take the journey of a lifetime and travel to ancient Babylon and the island of Patmos to discover how ancient mysteries reveal the future. A live seminar series. Don't miss any program. Talofa. Wow, we should have the benediction and go home after a song like that, shouldn't we? <laughs> How great our God indeed is. Lovely to be with you tonight. Special welcome to those at our other downlink sites. Yeah. And those joining us by television and the internet. Tonight's topic. The omen, the allegiance factor. Let's begin with prayer, shall we? Father, tonight, help us to understand the Bible very clearly. We're going to see that this is a vital issue in earth's last hours. Help us, Lord, not only to understand, but to open our hearts to the Spirit of God tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. John saw the Final events of planet Earth again. Right there in the center of the book of Revelation. John says, right there in the middle of the book, that three powers, a dragon, a beast that comes up out of the briny ocean, and a beast that comes up out of the land. These three powers are going to seek global worship. That means they're going to seek loyalty and allegiance from everyone. Notice what John saw in Revelation chapter 13. The Bible says, And all the world marveled and followed the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. Satan, I would remind you, who gave authority to the beast. That's the beast from the sea. And they worshipped the beast. He, that's the land beast now, causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. And John has just said, if you worship the beast from the sea, you worship the dragon. And sadly, John is telling us that in the end of time, the times in which we're living today, most people on planet Earth are going to worship or give their allegiance to Satan. Now you need to come night by night because you're going to see how clearly that's going to happen. John tells us, and the result, of course, or the, for those who worship Satan is destruction. And because God can see that, God sends final messages to our planet in an attempt to save people from where they're heading. 
The first angel. We see something different tonight that we haven't been looking at. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice worship him who made the heaven and the earth the sea and the springs of water. The Bible says in the end of time in order to counter those three evil powers God sends three angels to seek to save the human race. And the first angel says worship God as creator. Now in the world today there are two opposing theories of where we came from. There is what the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ created this world in six days. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20 for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. The sea and all that is in them. It is very plain, my friend. But sadly, most of the world today does not believe that. Sadly, many Christians do not believe that. They believe God used long periods of time. But the Bible says, for by Him, Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven that are on earth visible and invisible Jesus made it all now the other theory is called Darwinian evolution it basically says this that everything exists today because of long periods of time and plenty of chances so over billions of years we have come from the mud and the slime till we are here today but it took billions of years to get us to this point but God said in six days now there is a law of our mind it's a basic law that belief eventually will lead to behavior what we believe today will act out tomorrow. Now Darwin's belief, I want you to notice it. He believed that some races on this planet are more superior than others. That's what he believed. It's in the original title of his book. There it is. This is what it was called. The Origin of Species by means of natural selection or the preservation of the favoured or better races in the struggle for life. You see what he's saying here? Some races are better than others. Now tragically, Adolf Hitler's Nazi party in the Second World War and communism, their 
policies ja ole to tulla fono were influenced by evolution na fear on na ol tel to nunga evolution and the result was ja ol na junga la ole mia millions of people were slaughtered to tel et ngata na fasotia you see at its heart Communism believes there is no God. He doesn't exist. We just came by time and chance. You do not need a God for that. Now Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the great Russian philosopher, when he looked back over the years of communism, and this man went to Siberia as a prisoner of communism, notice what this man said. If I were asked today to formulate as concisely as possible, the main cause of this ruinous revolution, communism, that swallowed up some 60 million Russians. Did you know that? During the 70 years of communism, 60 million Russians lost their lives. Notice what he said. I could not put it more accurately than to repeat. Men have forgotten God. That's why all this has happened. Communism, based on evolution, leads us to that. Now, my friend, tonight, it's not just what happened in Russia. The theory of evolution is having a tragic impact in our planet today. You will remember that pure evolutionists like Richard Dawkins who wrote his world famous book The God Delusion meaning there is no God and many believe that today you remember what you believe today affects behaviors tomorrow. Many people are being taught this day in, day out on the TV in the classroom all the time and it goes down into the heads of people. Now, if there is no God, then there are no moral laws because there's no God to give those laws. So who decides? Society determines the moral values. What we collectively agree on those are the morals today. And that's why we have things like rising divorce rates. Who says divorce is wrong? The Bible does. But there is no God. So let society decide, you see. If there is no God, who says it's wrong to have multiple abortions today? And this is happening globally today. Lawlessness abounds. There are no moral absolutes if there is no God. If there is no God, then and you're all alone. When human beings let you down and you have no human to lean on, that's it. 
Because there's no God to help you out. And that's why today, my friend, one of the reasons there is so much fear and unresolved guilt and loneliness in our world. Now, I'm not blaming all of this on to evolution, but it's got a huge part to play. If there is no God, then you're an accident. You just happened. You're the product of random time and chance. That means there's no real meaning to life. There's no great destiny, no grand hope to which we're moving. And that's one of the reasons many people have low self-esteem and self-worth today. Because we didn't come from the hand of a great creator God. And one of the growing problems in the world today is suicide. And one of the reasons is this belief and its impact down through our subconscious. Thank God he has a solution. In a world that is increasingly becoming like that, God has a message. That's that final message. The first angel. The world. You do not believe there is a God. God says, I exist. Worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. My friend, how relevant is that? How did John know that 2,000 years ago, most people on the world would not believe that God created everything. So God sends a special message for today. Worship Him. There is a God. Give your allegiance to Him. He is your Creator. Now, how do we do that? How do we show that we worship God as creator? It's right there in the heart of God's law of love. You would expect that of God. He wrote it with his own finger. It's found in the fourth commandment. Exodus chapter 20. Notice what what the Bible says. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it, in the Sabbath, you shall do no work. You, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, not even your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. Why? Here's the answer. For in six days. Stop, my friend. Young people, when you go to university, you are being told that it took billions of years. Some smart people are telling you that, but they are wrong. The Bible says, in six days, and God placed it right in the heart of his Ten Commandments. And he said, remember. Wow. God is trying to protect us, you see. Remember, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, 
And he rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. And he hallowed it. The Bible says, my friend, we worship God as creator by keeping his Sabbath holy. That's how we remember him. That's how we worship him as creator. Now, what is the purpose of the seventh day Sabbath? Why did God give it to us? Number one, the Sabbath is a sign or an omen or a mark that God is our creator. Notice what the Bible says in Exodus 31. The Bible says, talking of the Sabbath, it is a sign, there it is, an omen between me and the children of Israel forever. Why? For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. God is very clear here. Our origins go back to God. They do not go back to the monkey. They go back to God. That's the Bible's teaching. You see, the Bible says that on day one, God made light. And the evening and the morning were the first day. On day two, God made the atmosphere, the gases that we breathe, the oxygen and so on. On day three, God said, let the land, the dry land appear out of the water. The Bible says on day four, the vegetation spread over the land. God brought forth green things. On the fifth day, God made the birds and the fish that swim in the water. On the sixth day, God made the land animals, the Bible says. And on the sixth day, He made human beings. That's what the Bible teaches. The evening and the morning was the first day and the second day, a six-day period. Man. The Bible says, when God made man, look what he did. Then God said, let us make man in our image. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Wow. I wish we had time to show how he made Adam. He didn't just speak him into existence. He formed him of the dust of the ground. And then he breathed into him the breath of life. Then he took a rib out of the man. And he fashioned the woman. We were made in the image of God. And then the Bible says, on the seventh day, God rested. That's what the Bible teaches. John, uh, we're told in Genesis chapter 2, notice what it says. Thus the Bible says, the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. I want you to notice, the Bible says God's creation was finished. Evolution says no. We are still progressing. 
You see this thing, my friend, tonight. They were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then, God blessed the seventh day. And he sanctified it. Why? Because he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Do you notice what God does with the seventh day? Number one, God blessed it. That means he made it for joy. You remember Jesus says, blessed are this and blessed are that in the Sermon on the Mount. That word blessed means all the happiness. So the seventh day was made for the joy. Number two, God sanctified it. Now the word sanctify means to be set apart from something. In this case, the seventh day was set apart from the other six. It's different because God rested on it. And that's the last point. Why is it sanctified? Why is it holy? Because the Almighty rested on it and does that every seventh day. So the Sabbath, which means rest, came on day seven. God rested so that he could spend time, quality time, with his new children, Adam and Eve. What a God, my friend. What a God. He wants to spend time with us. So he rested. Now the Bible says that command begins with remember. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why did God say remember? For two reasons. God knew that the human race would be pr prone to forget. And we have, as a race, forgotten. And that's why we're in some of the mess we're in today, let me tell you. But why does God say remember? He wants us to remember our roots. Where we came from. The Sabbath reminds us every week. You came from the hand of God. You are very special. Now the Sabbath rest is for all people on planet Earth. You see, the Sabbath was never exclusively for the Jewish people. How do we know that? Well, Jesus created all of us. He didn't just create the Jews. We are all his children. Now, the Jewish people came about 2,000 years after creation. But the Sabbath was given 2,000 years before the Jews came. That's why Jesus said these words. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. What's Jesus saying? You notice that word man. That's not talking about males. 
That is the Greek word anthropos. From which we get the word anthropology. The study of humankind. So Jesus is saying, the Creator. The Sabbath was made for the human race. He doesn't say the Sabbath was made for the Jews. We are all his children. And that's why the final message to worship God as creator is given to all the race. What does it say? To every nation. Every tribe, every tongue, and every person, worship him who made the heavens and the earth. We are all God's children. So number one, the Sabbath is a sign or omen that God is our creator. You are not an accident. You are not a nobody. You were made in the image of God. Not the image of a monkey. You are a child of the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. So you see, the Sabbath gives rest of mind because it reminds us where we came from. Number two, the Sabbath is a sign of the belonging and the care of God. Notice what the Bible says. Book of Ezekiel this time. Hello my Sabbaths. They will be a sign. An omen. There it is again. What for? Between me and you. So that you may know that I am the Lord your God. In other words, God is saying every seventh day the Sabbath reminds us we belong to God. The human heart longs for belonging. And we belong to God. Now, how does it show that God, God cares for us? Come with me to this horrible desert in Sinai again. Moses called it this horrible place. It's blazing hot. And he lived here. Before we get to Mount Sinai, in the 16th chapter of the book of Exodus, we have a story where God sent bread down from heaven to feed the hungry Israelites. It was called manna, you remember. Now this is before God wrote his laws with his finger. They had not yet got to Mount Sinai. They're in the Sinai Desert, but not yet at Mount Sinai. Notice what God says. He said, in the morning, you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So how would they know the Lord was their God? That they belong to him. Well, we see it in the instructions for the manna. Watch what happens. They were told, don't keep this manna overnight. Because if you do, in the morning it will be full of maggots. How many like eating maggots? 
Well, it's not the favorite food of everybody, is it? So don't keep it overnight. Number two, God said, gather twice the amount on the sixth day of the week. So bring in twice the amount. Prepare on the sixth day the food for the Sabbath the next day. The seventh day. Notice what it says. It shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily the other days. That's why in the Bible, the sixth day of the week is called the preparation day in the Bible. Because they prepared the food for the Sabbath. Number four, they were to keep it overnight on the Sabbath. So they laid it up till the morning. Just as Moses commanded. And it did not stink. Nor were there any worms or maggots in it. Now hang on. Every other day, if they left it overnight, there were maggots in it. Yet when they leave it overnight, so that on the seventh day, when they go to eat it, there are no maggots there. Question. How does the maggot know one day from another? This is a miracle. God is working a miracle for these people. That's what he's doing. Our creator, to whom we belong, will care for our needs. That's what this is telling the people. The Sabbath helps us know that he is the Lord our God. We belong to him. And since we belong to him, like a child belongs to a parent, he will care for our needs. What a God! And the Sabbath reminds us of that. But look what happened. Now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather the manna. But they found none. God did not send the manna on the seventh day. But they went out to collect it. They said, basically, God's not particular. One day is as good as another. And they went hungry that day. Because God is particular. It does matter to God. And this is what he said to Moses when he saw this. They said one day is as good as another. The Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments? And my, laws, my brother and sister tonight, it matters to God. And therefore it should matter to us, his children. So the Sabbath brings rest because it teaches us our Creator will provide for all of our needs. The Sabbath is a sign of the care of belonging. It tells us you're not left to, to battle through life alone. 
God is with you. When everyone lets you down, you can count on God. There's no need to give up. He is here with you to help you in your daily needs. We don't need to disobey his commandments in order to survive. If God says keep my Sabbath and you say I might lose my job God says trust me I will look after you. He's a great God. So the Sabbath is a rest of mind to us. Lastly the Sabbath is a sign that God makes us whole. Notice Ezekiel again. Do you know why Ezekiel says so much about the Sabbath? Because the Israelites forgot to keep the Sabbath. And he is calling them back to God and his commandments. And he says, Moreover, God says, I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign. There it is again, an omen. Between them and me. So they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. What does sanctify mean? It means, number one, set apart for God, yes. But it has another meaning. It means we are made whole and set apart for God. God makes us whole again. We've been broken. Our, Our lives have been in ruins. But it is God who puts us back. How does he do that? Jesus. Says Paul. Therefore Jesus also. That he might sanctify the people. With his own blood. He suffered outside the gate. It is the blood of Jesus, my friend, that makes us whole people again. An acceptance of Christ. It is the death of Jesus that makes us whole for himself. You were made to belong to Christ. What a marvelous truth that is. We were made for God. And our lives messed up. He puts us back together again. That's what it is. That's why Paul says these words. If anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. We're whole again. And it is the power and the work of God to do that. And the Sabbath reminds us of that. That's the beautiful truth about the Sabbath, the third point. Exodus 31. The Bible says, Surely my Sabbaths you shall keep. For it is a sign, an omen, between me and you, throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. It is God who cleans up our lives. So the Sabbath is a sign, you see, my friend, that God makes us whole again. We are new people. We are set apart for Christ. We are wanted. We are loved. We are valued because God paid an enormous price. Oh, what a day the Sabbath is, you see. It's not some legal, legalistic thing. 
It's the very reminder of where we came from, of who looks after us, and who died to save us. Our Creator redeemed us. So the Sabbath brings rest of mind. Now, how do you rest with God? On his Sabbath. How do you do that? Well, number one. We need to rest on the same day that God is resting on. Otherwise, we're not going to connect with God as he wants us to. So what day is that? How do we know? What day God is resting on? The Bible is very plain. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it, you shall do no work. So which day is the seventh day then? We know what day is the Sabbath. It's the seventh day. But which day is that? We would go to the cross because it reveals to us which day is the Sabbath of the Bible. On the day Jesus died, which was the preparation day, we'll see, he cried out, It is finished. Just as he cried out, it is finished at creation. So when he died to make us new people, he cried out, it is finished. Now notice what Luke says. That day, the day he died was the preparation. We saw that's the sixth day. The day they got the manna. That day was the preparation. And the Sabbath drew near. The next day was the Sabbath. And the women who had came with him from Galilee followed after. And they observed the tomb and how his body was laid out. Then they returned, prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to God's command. These are Sabbath keeping women. And it's after the death of Jesus. The new covenant has started. Now on the first day, the next day, first day of the week, early in the morning, they and certain other women that were with them, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. So let's put it up. Now these are the order of events as they were in the Bible lands. Not here, but in Israel when Jesus died. Here it is. The sixth day or the preparation day was the day he died. It's called Good Friday in Israel. In America. In, in Egypt. In Europe. That's what that day is called. Then on the seventh day, or the Sabbath, Jesus was resting in the tomb, the Bible. Then on the first day, which is called in Israel, Easter Sunday, you can see the day in the middle. It's very easy to find out which day is the Bible saying. It's the day between the sixth day, which in Israel is Friday, and 
the first day, which is Sunday, which in Israel, and America, and Australia, and China, and Europe, Europa. is called Saturday. Now the seventh day in the Bible is kept from Genesis right through to Revelation. We would expect that. God doesn't contradict himself. You see, Jesus kept the Sabbath. And that's why we should all keep the Sabbath. Because Jesus is our example. He attended church on the Sabbath. The Bible says he came here to the synagogue church of Nazareth. Now this is not the one Jesus came to. But it's an ancient synagogue in Nazareth. That you can visit today. It reminds us of this verse in the book of Luke. So he, Jesus, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, we would say as his habit was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and he stood up to read. My friend, Jesus kept the Sabbath. All through the Old Testament, the Sabbath was kept. And as we close the book of Revelation, as we close the Bible, the last book talks about the Sabbath again. It was on the island of Patmos where we see John kept the seventh day Sabbath. John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Now the question is, what day does the Bible call the Lord's Day? Not what we call it, or someone else calls it, but what does the Bible call it? When we go, we find very clearly in the Bible. Go back to the commandments of God. It says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Your God. The Bible is saying that the Sabbath is the Lord's day. That's what Jesus taught. He said, therefore the Son of Man himself is the Lord of the Sabbath. Do you see right there, Jesus is claiming to be Jehovah God. He's saying, that Lord, capital L-O-R-D, in the Sabbath commandment, the Sabbath of the Lord, that is me. The Sabbath highlights who Jesus is. Now in the languages, we can see very clearly which day is the Sabbath. In over 140 languages on this planet, the seventh day is called the Sabbath in the languages of the people. In Greek, it's called Sabaton. In Spanish, Sabado. Sabado. In Arabic, as Sabbat. The seventh day is called the Sabbath in 140 languages. Now someone says tonight, and that's a good question, but haven't we lost track of time through the ages? We haven't, my friend. You go to the Bible, and the Sabbath is called the Sabbath right into the Old and the New Testament. We just read what Luke said. They had not lost track of what the days of the week were. But I would like, I would like you to come with me to many countries in the world. I can take you to Israel. And in Israel, on the Friday, the sixth day, the Arabs 
the Muslims will go to the mosque. Then the next day in Israel, the Jews and some Sabbath-keeping Christians will go, will keep the seventh day holy. Then the very next day in Israel, on the first day, or the Sunday in Israel, they will be keeping the Sabbath, many Christians. That's how it is in Israel, I've been there. That's how it is in London, I've been there. That's how it is in Asia, I've been there. That's how it is in America. One, two, three. Nobody has lost track of time. The sixth day, the Muslims. The seventh day, the Jewish people and some Christians and the first day most Christians. No loss of time, you see. Now there's something else about the Sabbath. If you want to keep the Sabbath with God because he's resting then we need to keep it how God keeps it. Jesus. The Bible says the Sabbath runs from sunset on the sixth day to the sunset of the seventh day. Notice what the Bible says. From evening to to evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. The Bible is very plain. Jesus said, at evening, that means when the sun set. Today, people go from midnight to midnight. But that is not the way the Bible counts time. The Bible said the evening that means the dark part and the morning the light part is the first day. The evening when the sun sets and the dark and the light to the next evening is the next day. So Sabbath starts when the sun goes down and ends when the sun goes down 24 hours later. Now someone says this and it's a good question. Shouldn't we keep the first day in honour of the resurrection? That's a good question, my friend. But let me tell you, if you go to the New Testament, you will find eight New Testament references to the first day in the New Testament. But not one of them, none of them say worship on the first day in honour of the resurrection. It is just not in the Bible, my because the Bible tells us to remember God on the seventh day. Now someone says, but can't I worship God every day? Well, I hope you do worship God every day. I certainly worship God every day. But there's a difference in the Bible between worshipping on the other six days and the seventh. The Bible says, six days you shall labor. We are to work six days and do all the work, your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. There's a difference, my friend. Six days you can work, but not on the Sabbath, God says. That's the day he wants to connect with us. Now someone says, can't I keep any one of the seven days? Isn't it all right just to worship on any one of the seven so long as it's a particular a day? Let's remember what the Bible says. But the 
seventh day. Is the Sabbath of the Lord. We cannot choose our own day to worship. God specifically says the seventh. Not a seventh. You imagine if, if when I was courting my wife, Marilyn, I must show you a picture one day of my wife. She is beautiful. I hope you think your wife is beautiful too. Me. She should be the most beautiful lady for you if that's your wife. <laughs> so I'm, I'm courting my wife, right? And she has six sisters. So I go to her father and I say, uh, Mr. Walker, that's his name. I want to marry your seventh daughter. Marilyn. Marilyn. He says, Look. I really want to get rid of the other ones first. Look, just take any of the seven. I say, hang on, Mr. Walker. The other six are not the seventh one. I want that one. You got the point. It's not a seventh day. It is the seventh day. But why? Because God is resting on it. And we want to join him. If we go for some other day, we will miss God. In that sense. In that special sense. You imagine again, I say to my wife, Sweetheart, it's time for our anniversary. And let's go to Niagara Falls of all places. For our anniversary. We will meet on the 7th of June. But I tell her, when I finished in Samoa, I have to go to Israel to take some people for a tour. So I'm going that way, but you'll have to come this other way. So we'll meet on the 7th. So I head off. And then when it comes toward the 7th of June, she says, nah, I think I'll meet him on the 6th. So she arrives in Niagara on the 6th. Is she going to meet me? No, she's not. Because after the 7th, I'm off again. I arrive on the 7th. She's come on the 6th. We've missed each other. You see, my friend, why it's important to keep the Sabbath of God? Because he wants to connect with us in a special way. Now, let me remind you because there's a special problem we face right here in Samoa. I'm very well aware of that. And I want to help you tonight so that you can connect with God properly. God's names for the days of the week He did not name them except for two days. He called the first day the first day. When he made light. Then he said the second day. Then the third. Then the fourth. Then the fifth. Then the sixth day. On which he made men and women. And told us to prepare. He called the sixth day by a name. Later on, preparation. The seventh day, God called on the time of creation the Sabbath. 
Now that's the names God gives. These are in the Bible. Now man cannot change the weekly order. That's impossible. Because God has already done it. Where did the week come from? It doesn't come from the sun going around and so on and so forth. It doesn't come from like the moon, the moon doing something. The weekly cycle comes from creation. And it continues. After day seven, it will be the first day again. And the second and so on. It came from creation. Now here is Samoa before 2012. Yeah, uh, there was what we call a dateline. And this is what happened. On Sunday, on that side, that's where I come from, that was the first day of the week. And you here in Samoa, because you're on this side, that was called Saturday for you. You're a day behind. That's the seventh day of God's weekly cycle. That's what the Bible calls the Sabbath. So this is what you used to do. First day, you called it Sunday. Second day of God's week was Monday. Third day, Tuesday. Fourth day, Wednesday. Fifth day, Thursday. Sixth day, Friday. Seventh day is the Bible Sabbath. That's what it used to be before 2012. Then came 2000. 11 at the end, right? What happened in that week before 2012? Let's go through the week together. You will remember. The first day of that week, because it's God's week, was Sunday. The second day of that week was Monday. The third day of that week was Tuesday. The fourth day was Wednesday. You got to the fifth day and it was called Thursday. Then you got to the sixth day and it was called Saturday. Remember? I want you to notice the day name change but not the order on which God brings the day. You see the Friday name was dropped and the government called Friday Thursday. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the government called the Friday what? Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. And the next day which was called Sunday, was still God's seventh day. You cannot change one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can change the name, but you can't change the cycle. It's fixed at creation. So the called the Sabbath Sunday. But it was still the seventh day of God's week. Now why and how did that happen? Well you remember and the government is allowed to do what the government wants. I have no problem with the government. That's their prerogative. But if we're going to follow God's word, then we have to follow God's word. Jesus said that's number one. Yeah. So what happened was the government said we want to be in a better financial situation. 
with Fiji and New Zealand and Australia. You know, it's very difficult business-wise. You know the game. So the government said, we're going to move the line around us so that we're going to be on Sunday which is the first day of the week for the New Zealand people and for the Australian people so they called it Sunday but in the cycle it's still God's seventh day. You see because the sun doesn't wiggle and bend like that. It doesn't take a journey that way. It goes in a straight line so it was still the seventh day the government just called it a different name the Bible just says remember the seventh day no matter what we call it the seventh day is the Sabbath so after 2011 we have Monday, but really, in God's cycle, it's the first day. That's really what it is. We just called it a different name. Then Tuesday was really the second day of the week. The third day now was Wednesday. The fourth day, God's fourth day, was really Thursday. The fifth day was Friday now. The sixth day was Saturday. And that's why people who follow God's commandment, which says remember the Sabbath day, they do not keep the Saturday here in Samoa. Because it's not the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day. Because God said so. That's what makes it the Sabbath. The seventh day. So Christians in Samoa who really want to worship Christ as Creator, then they should go to church on your Samoan Sunday. Why? Because it's God's seventh day. However, and God commands that, you see, However, if Christians in Samoa want to worship on Christ's resurrection day, then they should go to church on the Samoan Monday. Because in God's order of days, that's the first day of the week, you see. My friends, tonight, we have to be consistent with the Bible. God said the seventh day is the Sabbath. Man can call it what he likes. But God gave the weekly cycle. God never commanded us to keep the first day, but. So let's come to the end now. John sees the final battle for global control. The world is caught in the grip now. A battle for worship. For allegiance. Whom will we worship? Most will give their worship or allegiance to Satan, the Bible says. And the result will be destruction. So God sends a final warning message to try to save people so they won't worship the dragon. He calls out, worship him who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. Now my friend, that statement from Revelation is taken right out of the fourth commandment of the Sabbath. Notice what the Bible says. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
for in six days Awa, ono, the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is the in them. God is calling men's attention back to the Sabbath in the end of time because we've forgotten our roots we've forgotten we came from the hand of God we've forgotten that our God can look after us we've forgotten that God died for us and the Sabbath calls us back the seventh day the Sabbath my friend in the end of time is a sign or omen that we worship God exclusively Ezekiel says I am the Lord your God walk in my statutes my laws Keep my judgments, which means my commandments, and do them. And then God adds, hallow my Sabbaths. They will be a sign between you and me that you may know that I am the Lord your God. A sign of belonging. It's a sign that we love God supremely. We don't worry what Tom, Dick or Harry says or this religious leader or whatever. We say, what does God say? I love my God. And that's what Jesus said. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. God's end time people, John saw them when he was on Patmos. John says, the dragon was enraged or angry with the woman. He went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God. And they have the testimony of Jesus. These are Christian people with the testimony of Jesus and the commandments of God written in their heart. My brother, my sister tonight, God says to you, remember my Sabbath because when you do you will remember I am your creator I am your provider I am your redeemer there was a little boy he made a beautiful little yacht and he loved to sail this yacht on the stream of the village he tied a piece of string to the yacht and he would hold the piece of string and watch his little boat float along the river one day unexpectedly a gust of wind caught the sail in the sail and pulled the string out of his hand and the little boat sailed down the river quite a fast little stream he tried to keep up but it, it vanished he was shattered he had made that little yacht himself and disappointed one day he was doing some window shopping in the village and when he came to one shop there was his boat in the shop window he went inside he said say mister the shopkeeper that boat in the front window it's my boat I made it please can you give it to me whoa whoa said the man that boat belongs to me somebody bought it in here and I paid good money for it if you want that boat you're going to have to pay for that boat boy. the little boy he put his hand in his pocket pulled out a few coins and banged them on the counter. Say, mister, is that enough? The man said, no, sonny. 
It cost me much more than that. Ja, het dan moet dat. You can't have your boat. So the little boy went out of the shop. Very disappointed. But he wanted his little boat that he had made. So he decided to raise some money. He cut some lawns for people. He chopped some wood for people. And finally, a few months later, he came into the shop with a hand full of money. And he looked in the window, and there was his boat still. So he went inside, and he banged the money on the counter. Said, "Say, Mister, is that enough money for my boat?" The man counted the money. Yes, Sonny, that's enough money. You can have your boat. So the little boy got the boat out of the window, and as he left the shop, cradling his little yacht, he said, "Little boat." Little boat, twice mine. First I made you, then I bought you. My friend, that's the Sabbath. First God made us. When we went astray, He paid a price for us. God gives us a reminder of that every week. Remember the Sabbath. The wonder of it all is, my friend, that God loves us as human beings. Listen to the song as we close.
Let's bow together in prayer, shall we? Father in heaven, thank you for giving us the Sabbath, a day that reminds us that we came from the hand of God, a day that reminds us that God will look after all our needs, a day that reminds us that Jesus makes us whole. Father, maybe we had not realised what the Bible taught about Sabbath, but we see the truth tonight. This coming Sabbath, the seventh day, may we keep that day in honour of Jesus, our Creator God. Because that's what the seventh day is all about. May we remember to keep the Sabbath from sunset on the sixth day. Because that's when the Sabbath begins. Father, may we remember not to do our own work. God wants us to rest with Him and enjoy all of the day with Him. So bless us in Jesus' name. Lord, many hearts are here tonight and they want to say, you know, Obedience to what you have asked of us in your commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You'd like to raise your hand tonight to tell the Lord that, Lord, I want to follow Jesus. I want to connect with him in a special way on Sabbath, not in honour of the resurrection because the Bible doesn't command that, but in honour of Jesus, the creator God. I want to follow Jesus. Just raise your hand tonight at the downlink sites, maybe on the internet, on television. You can bow your head and tell the Lord, that's what I want to do. I want to be, like you said, obedient because I love you. Hear our prayer tonight and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this program. If you'd like to see more in the series, why not contact the number on your screen right now?